whole crescendo is that somebody wants to buy a property. And this is where your total value comes into play. That's what we refer to as the negotiation process. And I've got very strong views on this one. I don't think it would be right to represent a consumer if you didn't know the right words to say and strategies to take when a negotiation is live. And what do I mean by live? Well, if you're showing this incredible home right now and somebody says, I want to buy it, you can't be then thinking, what do I do next? So for example, you'll have someone make you an offer on a property. Maybe not this home, but let's say we have a home for 689 and they offer you 600. Well, the first mistake you don't make is to go off and inform the owner. Yes, we have to tell the owner by law, but please understand that silence implies consent. And if you do not stand and negotiate now, we never get a chance to go back to that step. So it's really important we slow the negotiation up and ask the consumer, how did you arrive at that figure? Now, quite often they'll say to you, oh, we saw two others down the road. Now, don't take that as competition, just take it as an interesting thing where you may say, is there any reason why you didn't go ahead with those, yet you're making an offer on this one? And I suppose the whole theme that I want you to be is curious. Don't try and be the big, strong person negotiator who only gets his way in the negotiation. And you may hear me say throughout this program where I refer to that as a bully negotiator. And that means you're saying incorrect things or inappropriate things such as, if you don't buy this, somebody else will. This afternoon at five o'clock, if you haven't signed the contract, it's all over. You wouldn't want to be treated that way yourself. No need to do it to them. If anything, brilliant negotiators are calm. Now, some of the other agents that I've had the pleasure of working with also break this up. And they may say, all price aside, is this really where you would like to live? Is this the one you want? Well, let me see, can I get it for you? Now, you may hear throughout your time of training what they call win-win negotiations. And a win-win is that both parties feel they're part of the process and getting their way. You'll know when you're completely off the track within a negotiation when the vendor says this to you. They're getting it all their own way. Because these two people have never met before. They both like the same style of home, yet now, due to pride, they hate each other and you're the only conduit of information well then it's your dialogue that's causing the fog. And when I use the word the fog, no one can see where to go next. And it's our job to facilitate the offers, make everyone feel comfortable, and that they're part of the actual process. So let's take the purchase aside. You may say, how did you arrive at that figure? And, that, and they'll tell you about the other properties. Sometimes the buyer even say, I just wanna get it cheap. Now this is a confronting place because we represent the owner. That is our client. The incoming client, who's still a client, is the purchaser. But we've got to understand the rules of negotiation here. The vendor wants as much as they can, and the purchaser wants, for, wants the property for as little as they can. Now, what can be a conflict of interest is that you've actually built up great rapport with the purchaser, and, and sometimes you're in favour of them because you like them as people. Yet we always, 100% non-negotiable, represent the owner. So how is it we can manoeuvre this round and make everyone feel important? Simple. You say to the buyer, I'd like, I'd like you to see, to see you get this property. Now, this is the process. I'll go and sit with the owners and I'll put your offer forward. But they're gonna look me straight back in the eyes and say, Lee, what do you think? And I'm gonna have to say, I feel the property's on the lower side or, or your offer is on the lower side of the property's value. Now, I'm coming from a third party perspective because I don't own the property and I'm using the word value. I don't think price is the greatest word for you to use. Now, the buyer may say, but I want as, as cheap as I can. I understand that, but the property has a value. And out of all the other homes I've shown you, this out, by far outweighs anything else we've seen. And I suggest you put your best foot forward. So you've got to come across in an environment that you're working with all parties but please understand in negotiation, people only pay their greatest price and the owner only accepts the offer that they feel of true value when they arrive at one place, which is what I wanna call safety. The vendor wants to feel safe that there's not a better offer around the corner and they're making the right decision. The purchaser doesn't wanna feel they're overpaying for the property. Hence, you support its features and benefits 
and why it's probably the best property for them in the marketplace at this time. Sometimes the buyer will say, I don't have that amount of money. And in an objection land, you would then say, well, that's why you should buy it. It will never be at this price ever again. But you can hear from my dialogue and my tone, I'm very consultive in what I say. The next key tip in this negotiation, well, firstly, in your workbook is the entire process. It's stepped out in dialogue and actions of how you facilitate the offer. But let's just say we're coming towards the end of the offer now. You've got the buyer up two or three times and the vendor wants to know, should they go ahead? A mistake made, a big mistake made, is that the agent does all the negotiation with all parties back at the office. And they keep ringing the owner saying, I've spoke to this person, they said that. And I spoke to this person, they said that. No matter how good you are, the vendor's gonna think, are you on the level with me? Are you telling me the true facts? So I want you to try something else. No one does this in real estate, but you could. I want you to go and sit with the owner and make those final phone calls in front of them. A couple of things will happen here. One, we've got a transparent situation where they can see right into the work. Bring the five or six key people who are interested in the property on the list from the open inspection system or the people that you've taken the slips for that have a genuine interest in the property and say, Mr. and Mrs. Owner, let's ring these people together now and I want you to hear what they're saying. Now, obviously, they're not hearing the phone call, but they're watching you at work. And who do you work for? You work for the owner. And I can assure you that this process brings the whole deal together because the silence implies consent on the purchaser's size, but it also brings really a concern for the vendor that, well, maybe we didn't get enough for it. Maybe we should keep going for another week. And I see many agents chip away at this process, but they never arrive because the owner's left in the dark and they wanna feel part of the process and they wanna know that you're on the level. So let's take it one step further and show them exactly what we do, how we make the calls, and why the figure we've got is the best figure or what I refer to as the greatest outcome. But please take that action, study that workbook. That document is methodical. You need to learn it, internalize it, because this is a non-negotiable. This makes you a real, true professional. We can look at marketing, we can look at listing, we can look at buyer management, but if you wanna know that you've gotten the profit price for the owner, it's when you can confidently look them in the eye, knowing you've negotiated to the premium levels available. And please remember this, the owners get one chance to sell their home, and then the value is actually passed on to somebody else. What do I mean by that? If someone paid 689 for this house today, or a property, and suddenly they decided three months later they don't want to live there and they put it back on the market and a good negotiator got them $7.89, the other vendor's gonna say, wow, what happened to us? The market hasn't moved that much, but all that extra profit was extracted out of my property. And believe me, this has happened, where a good agent has taken over a property and then got even more than the asking price than the other agent was attempting to do with no negotiation skills. Mm -hmm.